I'm talking about, and I'm not saying that there are not, uh, you know, you know, when we talk about uh, CMEs that hit the, the magnetosphere that go around the backside and then they, they snap and that particulate hits the earth on the far side, I'm not talking about that type of, um, you know, seismic rhythmic pulse. I'm talking about on the front side, when you say atmospheric compression that causes people to hear sounds, what's that all about? Okay, with every, every frequency that's devised, you have the fundamental frequency and then you have dubbing frequencies. Understand, the primary frequency of harp is 1.2 hertz. That is the principal primary frequency. All other frequencies that are added into that are harmonics of that frequency. And doing so, if they are harmonic of that frequency, when they reach a certain point and they are in phase, all those frequencies that are in phase at that one point become super energy. Henceforth, sound, the area of sound, is carried with harp if it's within that range of harmonic frequencies. Something could happen in one area and be picked up and amplified with harp and wind up in another area. Therefore, you get these harmonic populations of sound. They come, they go, they go with a, at a, a cycling of 1.2 hertz. If you listen to all the backgrounds of all these sounds during the last five years that have been happening all over the world, you can hear that doppling weave at 1.2 hertz. So is harp the only reason for these, these sounds that people are hearing worldwide? No, there's a, what they call wall entrapment. On hillsides, uh, like on mountains, you have a area that's capable of, of doing the same thing. Of, of convexing certain sounds that are harmonically tuned to that length, and they can transpire to make an amplification of a sound, a distant sound, just like a, a satellite dish does. It focuses that sound to a specific direction. Now, what about what about these these, these people on YouTube? I mean, that are putting up these these videos and saying that sinkholes have something to do with this, this resonant frequency. It has to be, if you take a cavity that's been emptied of what was holding it up, and then you suddenly vibrate it with some, some vibration uh, such as harp, and you shake it, it will collapse. It starts a, a partial movement that eventually, if that hole has been emptied, and it's a cavity, you will have sinkholes. So, if, if you know, if you're looking at, if you're looking at thousands, we're looking at literally millions of sinkholes worldwide that are recently popping up, and this is not something that happens normally. Uh, we're seeing, we're seeing, we're seeing sinkholes, especially in Africa. Uh, what's causing these caverns to empty? And so that, that this can happen. Do you know? Some of it has been volcanic activity. When you push components of the earth out, and it empties into the openness of above, that leaves a cavity below. When you take oil out of the earth in such quantities without replacing it with something, then you have a cavity. When you have so many cavities, it creates like a suction underneath the earth's crust. And it pulls from other areas where there were small cavities, therefore giving sinkholes a latitude of falling in. By the way, it's not just harp, it's also atmospheric compression, like Billy said. That you're looking at sinkholes, millions of sinkholes, that are draining because of volcanism.
draining because of the pressure that's being built in the atmosphere. So it's not just Newtonian cosmology. It's not something that's happening just underneath the, the surface. Okay? It's also things that are happening right here, right now, in the atmosphere. It's not just HARP, and Billy is an expert at HARP, okay? But Bill, is, is, is there also reason to believe that the, the magnetosphere, when, when we have a solar event that hits the front side of our planet, that that, that CME hits our magnetosphere and then rolls around in the back side, and then like, our magnetosphere is like rubber bands. It's not, it's not like a blanket, it's, a, it's like rubber bands. It grabs that, that uh, particulate, it, it rolls it all, it spreads it all the way around our planet to the far side from face burning. And then what happens is it stretches out, and then what happens is there, there's a reverberation that it snaps back and it hits the planet. Is that true, Bill? That's absolutely true. The magnetic magnetosphere around the Earth it's no more than bands of uh, flux fields that normally are in order. When uh, CMEs hit it, it scratches it, it pushes them out of the way. It causes like a wave to misshape that flux field. That flux field, in, in, once it stops, it goes back to the normal flat position. But in doing so, it creates a movement. It creates a multitude of frequencies that we can adhere to, and it wipes out our radio signals, our, our water content. It creates uh, abnormal tides. It creates so many things that it, it's, it's just unfathomable. It's like a recoil. It's not just one thing, it's multiple things that are happening. And, and many people are, are going down these rabbit holes when people are talking about one aspect over another and they're, they're focusing on one thing or another. These people are, are, are duped in a lot of ways. Do you think so, Bill? I believe they keep on falling just one rabbit hole and don't see the whole picture. This, this whole thing is not just one thing. It's a multitude of things working together, and our government has, our governments uh, have a lot of ways that they can utilize some of this, and in doing so, they're pursuing weaponry and uh, a way of making a protection or a devisable weapon to destroy things. But that is what it, it's. That's just one little part of it. What's happening is uh, with these CMEs coming in, if you follow HARP, you can see HARP follows it exactly. You can see on the magnetometer at uh, Tacoma that it follows, that HARP frequency follows the CMEs exactly. All right, so let's talk about the, the government. Let's, let's get into the, uh, the whole PSYOP issue. Uh, so now, now we're looking at CMEs, and we're talking about the government, how they're using HARP to not only change A, the uh, jet stream, but also using HARP. Uh, we, we haven't talked about chemtrails yet, and, and we will, but let's hold off. Uh, they're also using, using uh, you know, HARP for, uh, you know, a seismic rhythmic activity just like our sun, or just like our, our moon, planetary rhythmic pulse, like we talked about a month ago. So how is the government using this as some kind of, you know, psyop? How is the Illuminati setting this up? And why are they using HARP? The governments together have introduced themselves to be a controlling mass. And that includes converting us all to the digital age, taking us away from uh, the analog theories, and uh, in
in doing so, it gives us a way not to be able to monitor what's going on in our world. It's a controlling conspiracy of uh, controlling us, controlling what we know, controlling what we can find out. Man, it's getting scary in here. Sounds good. All right, let's talk about how chem... Let's go, let's soften it up a bit. Let's talk about chemtrails and how chemtrails are connected to HARP and why chemtrails... Listen, one, I'll put the disclaimer out. Uh, chemtrails are not just based on what Bill's going to say. There's other reasons, but let's talk about why chemtrails are important to harm. Just that one aspect. Go ahead, Bill. Oh, we're going to really make this scary. Chemtrails and harp. Let's see. Welcome to your digital age. Welcome to the new matrix. Chemtrails components are of aluminum oxide other metallic objects, uh, they even contain nano digital references. These digital keys within chem clouds can be maneuvered by certain frequencies, high frequencies, very high frequencies, and give a digital control of what's happening within that cloud with uh, digital recognized components within nano digital uh, components within that cloud. What you're talking about here is silicon, lithium, uh, chromium, aluminum oxides, a mass of, of metals in the air that are nanoparticles. certain frequencies that hit those components and have digital information can control components within those clouds. Otherwise, changing polarity of uh, conductivity through those clouds, setting up corridors that are resonant to the clouds, making those clouds, simplified speaking, a large computer. talking about people being babble. And and then and also also you're talking about reflective aspects of you know, don't they use uh harp to to use chemtrails to reflect and and sharpen and be more precise? 